he uh, has given us talks in the past, uh, and he's been around for a good number of months on uh, sabbatical, but we're very lucky to have him giving us another talk. And uh, so uh, Martin Sander is a professor at the University of Bonn in Germany. He's been there for a good number of years, decades. And, uh, and um, Martin got a um, uh, master's in studying um, um, Permian reptiles at uh, UT Austin and then went for a PhD in Zurich, uh, working with Oliver Riepel and on um, marine um, reptiles, Triassic marine reptiles, and has done a lot of work over all these years on topics that we're going to hear about today and as well as a lot of work on the biology of sauropods and a lot of uh, work on uh, bone microstructure and gigantism and dwarfism and other things that relate to the biology of sauropods. But today he's not talking about dinosaurs, he's talking about ichthyosaurs and uh, essentially part of the work that uh, Martin and, and Lars, Lars Smith here, uh, from uh, uh, Claremont uh, College is uh, um, doing, um, they're essentially exploring a, a, a site in central Nevada with uh, middle triassic ichthyosaurs and we're very lucky because they've chosen the museum to be the repository for those uh, collections. So we mm -hmm. are looking forward to some really great stuff coming uh, our way. Martin, thank you. Thanks, Louise. Yes, I'm very happy to <coughs> talk about this topic. Usually I talk about dinosaurs, but this is sort of a sideline, an old love and interest of mine. And when I prepared this talk, I had great fun pulling everything together that happened over the last 25 years. And so it's surprising what, what lot, a lot of material came together, and that's what I want to show you today. And as you can see from the title, it's it's really always been a sideline because the field conditions are pretty tough and every time you ask yourself is, um, yeah, it's fun and it's pretty, but is it really worth doing it? And the older I get, the more I work in this area on and off, the more I realize, yes, it is worth doing it. And this is what I want to show you today. And so I also want to then show you this audience uh, what, why it makes sense then to work with this museum and so th as Luis mentioned already I think this would be the perfect place for uh, this material because it has a lot of uh, non-scientific interest, educational interest to it. And so let's get started. Um, right, so this is roughly what I'll be talking about. What are ichthyosaurs? Why are they important? They have a long research history and I'll delve a little bit into that. Then Triassic marine reptiles, as I said, that goes back to my um, PhD. The ichthyosaur, after all, is the Nevada state fossil, so you'd think there is some interest in these animals. Then I'll have a nice little slideshow with some very current slides from last December, in fact, um, on the field conditions. Then what did we find in those, those last 25 years in the Augusta Mountains? And how does this compare to Europe, where I'm from after all, and to China, where everybody else seems to be doing research? Why does it make sense to do this research in Nevada and not like many other people, or like stay where I am, or <coughs> go to China, where the source of all good paintological things in many ways is these things? <laughs> so why are we doing this just 500 miles north of here? And you'll see there's just simply a lot of good stuff coming out. Okay, so what are ichthyosaurus? For those of you who are not that paintologically minded, there was a very nice book, very easy reading that just came out, Remarkable Creatures is the title. Yes, ichthyosaurus are remarkable creatures. And they sort of mark the beginning of vertebrate paleontology in old Europe. For one, in Germany, but also in England, when in these sea cliffs here on the southern English coast, animals showed up, were collected by this lady here, Mary Anning, um, that sort of shook the foundations of the beliefs of the people of England and of Europe because there were sea monsters that were not around anymore. It would, and this is nicely explained in this book, 
So these cliffs of early Jurassic age yielded animals that were extinct. And extinction, of course, is sort of the beginning of paleontology. And so we had complete ichthyosaur skeletons long before we ever knew what a dinosaur was. So plesiosaurs and ichthyosaurs, those marine reptiles, by virtue of geology and history, were the first large extinct saurians known. And this one is a nice, this happened in Germany and in England pretty much at the same time. Here is a nice uh, specimen from our home collection. And you see it's not only the skeleton, but it also even has the soft parts preserved. So people early on could get a pretty clear idea of what these animals were like as living animals. And it took much longer until we had reached that state until dinosaur skeletons of this quality actually were found. So historically, ichthyosaurs are important. And here just to show you some more of this amazing stuff. Um, here is a forefin. In fact, in the current issue of Nature, there's a very interesting paper on reconstructing the color of the fins here based on some complex uh, spectroscopy. And so the conclusion was pretty boring. They were black. But it's amazing that you can show, <laughs> <laughs> that, you can show that this is, that you actually can confidently reconstruct the color. So these animals are paleobiologically very interesting, they're evolutionarily very interesting. So um, as you've seen, ichthyosaurs have this spindle shape. Oh yeah, well, so um, we'll go back a little bit. Uh, here we go. Right, so this is your ichthyosaur in the round, so to speak, and you see they have this remarkable resemblance to dolphins. Or actually, the other way around. Dolphins evolved along, along the lane same lines that ichthyosaurs did. Ichthyosaurs started out 250 million years ago. Uh, 200 million years earlier, roughly, than dolphins. And uh, so you see this large tail fin that at least the Jurassic ones have, a little dorsal fin, so they were fully aquatic. And that's what you can see in these fins as well. And uh, then what did they feed on? Just like modern cetaceans, I mean, they're reptiles. They derive from land-living reptiles. But like modern cetaceans, they were heavily into fish and in particular squid eating. Squids are an under, sort of, uh, represent an underappreciated resource in the sea. And so from most of the ichthyosaurs had teeth that were specialized for catching fish and in particular squid. And this is also what stomach contents show. So here we have this, uh, the uh, beginning of ichthyosaurus is 250, 240 million years ago. We see them here at the bottom. Then a similar body type evolved later twice in sharks and in dolphins. Sharks you always think are so primitive. They are, but these streamlined, efficient swimming sharks are actually something that happened in the late Cretaceous. And then later, of course, we have the dolphins from uh, um, that, that are, both of those groups are around today, but ichthyosaurs were the first to lead this extremely uh, aquatic existence and be derived from a land-living animal. So this is one of the big stories in evolution, is the evolution of these marine reptiles. And this is what uh, this makes so interesting. One of the key adaptations, if you're a reptile and you want to reproduce in the water, and this one key adaptation that modern turtles do not possess is life bear. This is known from a number of specimens, especially in Germany. Here you see the birth, a still the fetus still uh, stuck in the birth canal. Again, a specimen from Germany. And so, because of your land-living reptile, you lay eggs, hard-shelled eggs. Those eggs don't develop in water. So one of the things that <coughs> needs to happen evolutionarily is the evolution of life there. Mammals did this already anyway before they entered the sea, but reptiles have to do this repeatedly. And there's one specimen here on exhibit in Lisa's dinosaur exhibition, the pregnant plesiosaur, that tells that same story. So, Right, so ichthyosaurs, if you look at it, um, have, this is, you don't have to read the details, you just have to see Triassic, Jurassic, Cretaceous. A lot of what's happening, obviously, is in the Triassic. And then, 
a few lineages where only one cross into the Jurassic, the flourish in the lower Jurassic, and then once you get into the Cretaceous, it gets a lot thinner. So, like with uh, pretty much the entire origins of the modern vertebrate world, it's the Triassic that's so interesting because here is our big extinction event, the biggest in the history of life, and one of the things that happened after the extinction event is the colonization of the sea and this enormous diversification and that's, what, that's why everybody is so interested in the Triassic and this can be for dinosaurs or mammals or in this case marine reptiles. 